Time now for the morning rush. APD believes that a group of teens and young adults involved in Sunday morning's deadly crash committed multiple crimes beforehand. Police say that a black Nissan Altima sped off from a house party around 2 in the morning and that the group was then involved in a hit and run and later the beating of a homeless man. The Altima later crashed near University and the freeway, killing two of the nine people inside. The investigation continues this morning into what led to a fatal crash along Highway 491 on Saturday. McKinley County uh, deputies say that the driver drifted out of the right lane and hit a parked semi truck. They say that there were no signs of braking prior to the crash. The driver of the car was killed on impact, and the semi driver only had minor injuries. APD is continuing their investigation this morning into a person's death on Wantabo in the eastbound I 40 overpass. Police, along with AFR, were sent out just before 11 yesterday morning after a motorist called about a body. Crews had to use specialized equipment to collect the body. No names or a cause of death have been released. Erica. And here's a look at our hourly forecast today. Temperatures this morning are in the low 40s. We'll only make it into the 50s this afternoon with scattered heavy rain showers possible, so don't forget your rain gear. Well, traffic is back open on eastbound I 40 near Laguna after it was closed for a few hours yesterday evening. It was when an 18 wheeler caught fire on the interstate. Viewer video here shows thick black smoke coming from the semi just as the fire department arrived. There's no word on how that fire started, but luckily no one was hurt. We're also learning more details about the man who was shot and killed by APD officers along East Central. 32 year old Colin Natsozi was shot after officers responded to calls of a person with a gun on Saturday night. Witnesses say that Natsozi was pointing it at people and cars. APD arrived just after 6 and tried to talk to him. APD has not said if Natsozi fired at officers. Erica. And here's a look at the threat index. It is high today as we're going to see scattered rain and even some thunderstorms across the east. We'll also be seeing mountain snow that could <laughs> cause low visibility and gusty winds. There are new details about the man accused of stabbing three people on a rail runner train over the weekend. 32 year old Luis Sanchez was on the train heading to Santa Fe on Saturday when police say that he got into a fight with a male passenger. Officers say that he pulled a knife and stabbed the passenger, followed by a security guard and another passenger. Sanchez is charged with three counts of aggravated battery, felon in possession of a firearm, and resisting arrest. Happening today, Otero County Commissioner Coy Griffin is scheduled to be in court in Washington, D.C., for charges on his alleged role in the January 6th Capitol insurrection. The Cowboys for Trump founder is charged with knowingly entering the restricted areas of the Capitol. Griffin maintains his innocence. Supreme Court hopeful Ketanji Brown Jackson's road to confirmation begins today. Now, Jackson will face her first hurdle to reaching the high court. That's when she sits before the Senate Judiciary Committee. It's where she will face questions from a bipartisan panel of senators. Erica. All right, and here's a look at the traffic maps. They are looking clear. No accidents or slowdowns. Trackers heading west on I 40 near Carlisle. Everything's moving up. Well, as thousands of people continue to cross from Ukraine into Poland on Sunday, a special guest was there on hand to welcome the youngsters into the country. At the Medica border crossing, children were greeted by Santa Claus. That's where he gave out gifts to young people who had been forced to leave their homes because of the war with Russia. Stay with us. The five facts are coming up. Time now for the five facts. At number five, one UNM student is heading to Washington, D.C. after becoming the first New Mexican to receive a prestigious scholarship for aerospace. Raven Otero Symphony has been passionate about STEM ever since she was a little girl. Now she's one of 51 students to receive the Brooke Owens Fellowship. Through the fellowship, Otero Symphony will be interning for the aerospace consulting firm Avicent. At number four, we are learning more details about the man who was shot and killed by APD officers along East Central. 32 year old Colin Natsozi was shot after officers responded to calls of a person with a gun on Saturday night. Witnesses say that Natsozi pulled the gun after getting into a fight and was then pointing it at people and cars. APD arrived just after 6 p.m. and officers tried to talk to him. APD has not said if Natsozi fired at officers. They are asking for anyone with information to call 242 COPS. And at number three, there is a storm moving across the state, and it'll bring rain chances to Albuquerque and the whole metro area, especially through the afternoon. You can see that chance for rain goes up dramatically after 12 o'clock. And number two, we know more that uh, we know more this morning, rather, about the man accused of stabbing three people on the rail runner train over the weekend. 32-year-old Luis Sanchez was on the train heading to Santa Fe on Saturday when he got into a fight with a male passenger. Police say that he pulled a knife and stabbed the passenger in the back and stomach. And when a security guard tried to intervene, they say that Sanchez stabbed her in the neck and then another older woman in the shoulder. 
Sanchez is charged with three counts of aggravated battery, felon in possession of a firearm, and resisting arrest. And at number one this morning, we are learning more about a deadly crash over the weekend. APD now believes that a group of teens and young adults involved in that wreck committed multiple crimes beforehand. APD says that it all started on Sunday morning at around 2 in the morning when responding to a house party near Lett and Ash. That's when a black Nissan Altima sped off. Now, later, officers say that the same Altima crashed into a car near Lett and Pine Street, taking off again. Well, they say that that car ended up at the Denny's on San Mateo, where a witness told police that two teens beat a homeless man with a pole. The Altima later crashed near University and the freeway. APD says that alcohol, speed, and the number of people in the car were factors in that deadly crash.